Since April 28, 2021, Colombia has witnessed thousands of people protesting for guaranteeing their economic and social rights. Demonstrations in various cities, including Medellin, Bogota, and Cali, were met by state-sanctioned violence and repression. Human rights organizations have confirmed the death of at least 87 people from April 28 to September 28 of 2021. 3rd of May 2021 marked a night of hiding violence as demonstrations across several neighborhoods in Cali were disrupted by armed forces. Three people were killed in the neighborhood of Siloe. A young upcoming football player, Kevin Agudelo, was one of these victims. Amnesty International Crisis Evidence Lab and C2 Research analyzed more than 200 audiovisual assets and interviewed witnesses to verify and illustrate the details of Operation Siloe. The joint inclusion by national police officials, members of mobile anti-riot squad SMAT, and members of the special operation groups of the Colombian National Police, GOES, against demonstrators at La Glorieta roundabout in Siloe. In the early evening of May 3rd, demonstrators began setting up a candle vigil, Belaton, at La Glorieta roundabout. The vigil was in memory of Nicolás Guerrero, a young man who was killed the previous day at a peaceful march as a result from Ganshan Woods allegedly inflicted by members of the SMAD. The roundabout's fourth entrance were blocked by protesters and young people from the front line to allow for a large uninterrupted gathering around the mural painted on the road. According to a witness, at around 8 p.m., the protesters were calm and people were already beginning to return to their homes. At around 8.50 p.m., witnesses report that a Venom Armored Personal Carrier, APC, carrying around 15 agents, police officers, and members of SMAT came to the runabout from a Lido police station four blocks away. The police officers and SMAT dismantled the first roadblock set up by protesters to access the vigil and began firing tear gas and live ammunition into the crowd. Waves of panicked protesters, including children and older persons, dispersed into the neighborhood. Witnesses also stated that there was a power outage during this time frame, which prevented many people from witnessing and recording these events. Witness testimony and verified video evidence also confirms that around 9 p.m., two helicopters, allegedly belonging to the National Police, flew over the area and fired at demonstrators seeking refuge in houses in the neighborhood. From one moment to the next, I saw a helicopter flying overhead, shining a light on us and throwing gas at us. Aquí vienen más y los tiran directamente a la gente. Contra sí lo eh. Aquí vienen más bombas lacrimógenas, vean. Vean cómo caen. En medio de la gente así sin más. Tienen una pequeña desventaja pequeñísima. Another young protester attested that security forces had opened fire on anyone who was in the street standing. We young people were running like crazy to save our lives. There were some already injured. Ayuda! Ayuda, por favor! Soon after the power was cut, between 8.50 p.m. and 9.10 p.m., Kevin Agudelo and others were shot near La Sorpresa, the bakery around the corner from La Glorieta. A young witness at the scene recounted, I returned to the La Sorpresa bakery. When I was there, I saw two young men, wounded, dragging themselves along the ground. So I reacted and helped the second young man, who was Kevin. When I dragged him to the corner of the bakery, other young protesters gathered around, and together we were able to take him up to the point where they were treating the wounded before they were transported to a hospital. Están 
Testimonies claim that the shooting did not stop. Even though we were helping the two wounded, it seemed that they did not want us to help them because the shooting continued. Finally, Kevin's body was carried to a motorized two-wheel vehicle and he was transported to Los Chorros Hospital. Kevin's autopsy report states that he arrived at 9.42 p.m. with no vital signs and wounded by gunfire. The pathologist concludes, Macroscopic signs of firearm injuries on Kevin caused laceration of the aorta, causing massive hemothorax, and led to his death. The manner of the death was recorded as violent homicide. <laughs> 